explanation of the product life cycle. There was a guy called Everett Rogers who did all this research in the early 1960s and the research is just as valid today as it was in those days. And what Everett Rogers did, he looked at new products and how they get adopted over time. So if you actually look at the, th this particular slide, you'll see this time of adoption. If it were a, for example, if it were a, a fad or a fashion, it might be three months. If it's something like microwave cookers, it took 30 years before everybody got a microwave cooker. So clearly, that's naught, and this end point here is 100%, which means that when everybody's got it, everybody's got it. So every, everybody's got microwave cookers, everybody's got dishwashers, everybody's got cars, everybody's got washing machines. But it wasn't always like that, was it? Everybody's got mobile phones, haven't they? Um, the diffusion of phones was a bit quicker than we all thought it was going to be. But the interesting point about this is that if you look at these people, when you launch something, there are 2.5% of consumers in every market that Everett Rogers called innovators. Now these people, you can largely ignore them because they're the kind of people who are a bit sort of off the map. They're the kind of people who would buy anything because it's new. You know, the kind of person who, I mean, I met a lady not recently who'd got a pet rock. And I said to her, what do you do with it? She said, I talk to it, take it for walks. Now because this lady buys a pet rock, you don't set a factory up and produce millions of pet rocks, do you? You ignore them. And you'll find that however, no matter what zany product you produce or service, some loonies will buy it. You ignore them. Now the interesting group is this next group, and you'll see that Everett Rogers called them the early adopters. They're called different things. They're called opinion leaders. They're called, uh, I call them the Joneses. They are, generally speaking, if you look at them, they're people who are totally independent, independent thinkers. They tend to be higher socioeconomic groups, they've got, they're well-educated, they've got money, but they really do not care what people think of them. They're the first to adopt technology, they're the first to adopt you know, sports gear, they're the first to adopt fashion. And looking around this room, I can see we've got no opinion leaders for fashion in here, um, but um, don't worry, you'll be allowed to insult me later on when we get to questions. But the point about these people is they're the ones who give a market uh, credibility. And the Smiths, the next group, we're not in that. I mean, if I bought a, you know, a very average golfer, if I bought a, a fancy club, a big bob with a purple, you know, shaft and, a, and I went to the club, they'd laugh at me. Whereas if a club champion did, they'd say, oh, where did you get it from, etc., etc. So they're a very, very important group. And what's interesting is when you actually launch a new product or service, once you get about 8 or 9% up that curve, that's the point at which you can open the champagne bottles because the rest is going to happen automatically. So we move on to the next group, and I'll come back to that group later on. The early majority, we call them, well, the Smiths. Most of us are in that group for most things. We, it's, again, higher socioeconomic groups. We've got money. We're well educated. It's just that in the main, we haven't got an original thought in our bodies. Um, but if the Joneses do it, if the opinion leaders do it, we will eventually follow on and do it. And that gives a big, big kick to the market. Because quite clearly, when you get to this point here, you will see that there's another group here, another 34%, which I, I will come to in a moment. But these people are repeating, and there are fewer and fewer new ones coming in. So the rate of growth in the market must begin to decline. Market's still growing, but the rate of growth must begin to decline. And so you get to the next group, which is the late majority, and these people tend to be, and they're only tendencies, these aren't rules, tend to be lower socioeconomic groups, and price tends to become important, which I will come back to. Um, and finally, you get this group here, which is the laggards, people who view life through the, through the rear mirror. I mean, if you think about this whole concept of, let's say, with a new drug in the medical market, there are some doctors who will prescribe a drug the moment it comes you know, off the, the, the sort of registration um, circuit. There are other doctors who would wait eight or nine years before they've got the confidence to prescribe it. Now, that's clearly important news, isn't it? It's important information. So before I leave it, 
if you look at the opinion leaders or the Joneses, when I'm helping companies launch new products, that is the group that you always look for on their CRM system or on their database. And if they don't know, then there are ways of finding out. One way of finding out is to look at the new products or services you launched over the past decade, find out who bought them first and profile them and look for more. Another way of doing it is to ask the sales force, etc., etc. But the point I'm making is, when most companies launch new products, they marmalade their effort across the whole market when it's quite clear, isn't it, that all of this are going to show precisely zero interest in it because they're not ready for it. Now, if you spend less and you focus on these people here, isn't it blindingly obvious that you can get much better return for your investment in promotion, you can move up that curve quicker, and that is all I want to say about the diffusion of innovation, but you can see how that curve, can't you, ladies and gentlemen, goes with that one like that. And this is the whole point. When you get to this point here in a market, the inflection point, and I've drawn an idealized product life cycle here, they tend to be lumpy, but that's not the point. In general, this is what they look like, and again, you'll see that once you pass the 50% point there, that's when the rate of growth begins to decline, but the market's still growing. So you tend to get overcapacity in a market at that point, and then prices start coming down. Now, the whole thesis I want to put over to you this morning is that you do not need to drop your prices. And the only reason people, companies, drop their prices is because they don't understand any of this. And I can tell you there's nothing so practical as a good theory.